Hello everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of Be Open and Authentic with Rohit. So this is kind of the podcast where I focus on the quality of the content and uh, even if the episode is helping only few people that is still a big fo- win for me. So in this episode I'm going to focus on the latest stages of the F1 visa application process. In the previous episode I was talking more about the initial stages of the application process which is you know whether you want to you know um study in us or uh, when to start the preparation and uh, uh, when to uh, write the exams and um, you know how what are the strategies for preparing for the exams and um, you know which uh, what are the factors that goes into the application process such as statement of purpose work experience and things like that so that you can start focusing on those a little early in the process and i also spoke about uh, which major to pick um and and uh, spoke a little bit about the colleges and, and and things like that but in this episode i want to focus more on the second half of the application process which uh, is you know um a little bit after the exams after writing the exams you know which is uh, uh where uh, which starts with applying for the college selecting for the colleges applying for the colleges and uh, focusing on the finances and how to um uh, track the application process uh how to for, you know reach out to the professors and and how to tackle the visa interview and get the visa right so let's let's get started so one of the uh, crucial phases of the application process is selecting the colleges and applying for it you know uh, we are so uh, you know inclined on the exam process that hey once where we think once once the gr and ls are done we think the majority of the application process is done so and then we kind of relax and we kind of take it take the later part uh, you know little easy but uh, this is that's not good right uh, this is the most crucial part um you know which is like you know if preparing for the battle is one thing and going for the battle is is another thing so i still treat it as a, as as a battle so the most you know a commonly asked question right um what are the colleges to apply for and and how many uh, are colleges to apply for and uh, uh and how and 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 uh, how do we select the colleges because there are so many of them across uh, united states so i think um applying for the colleges depends on the scores right uh, what is your gre ielts or toefl or uh, academics um and and uh, i mean these these are the primary criteria and i mean i mean uh, with 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 any um no matter the respect of the score um you'll be able to get, uh, get into a college across any region right so but but let's tackle this question first how many um colleges to apply for so in my opinion um it's easy uh to say that hey i want to apply for 10 colleges okay and and i've seen people applying just for one college and just going for that college that's okay too as long as it works but depending on the finances uh you know uh and and other factors you know it's it's a personal choice for people but what i've seen working uh, most for the people is applying for a minimum of six colleges right um so where you categorize into three segments one is you know the ambitious category for example if uh, gre score is 320 and then an ielts is you know um like around 7.58 and then um and, and and if you want to in this category you are aiming for the college around 325 ish or something or or you know or just 320 but it's still hard to get into because you need work experience or things like that so it's more like um 
you know fairly hard to get into but it's not like you know hey uh, i i got like 300 and i want to apply for mit because since i'm applying for ambitious anyway i just want to give it a shot right it doesn't make any sense so you want to apply for the fairly ambitious college where uh, you know if arts are in your favor you you might get an admit right so uh, i'll i'll put i'll apply for two colleges in this category and the second two colleges are the moderate so here the chances that you will get into this college are you know more than 90% so unless you know it has been too competitive and or or unless something else happened that are out, that is out of your control you will not get admitted into the, this college right so this is, this is the and this is, these are the college that you really want to go to right because i mean this is the reality right so the, you have to be in the reality and apply for, you know pick these two colleges and and the last two colleges are you know are kind of the safe bets because if if for any reason if moderate colleges didn't work out then um this is the fallback option this is the most important right but you know you cannot just be like hey if you have a you know 320 you and you cannot you don't want to apply for college around uh, you know 290 or 300 and say that hey this is say better uh, you know i just want to have an admit in hand right no that's not good so you have to select you know um the college around 310 or 315 where you will definitely get into right so and and doing research around uh, you know this three categories is is uh, very tricky because because there is no one source of you know uh, truth to say that hey um, or there is no real information that if you give you know a GRE IELTS and uh, you know academics you get a list of colleges and uh, and uh, and that that's it right so it doesn't work like that because there are so many other factors that goes into the application process uh, such as statement of purpose or research experience or work experience. and uh, you know some factors out of your control right so which is if uh, the competitive nature of the application process some at sometimes you know only a uh, few people apply for the same college and at times everyone wants to go to the same college so even if you think that as a moderate college you know that might become ambitious as well so you have to track all this process which is little tricky um and and it varies <laughs> over the time so there is no real uh, there is no secret sauce for it you just have to do your research and and uh, be um a little bit in the in the reality right um this is where you speak to the you know alumni of the university or people who are pursuing the masters in the same university and and uh, you have to this is where you do the most hard work you know after the exams um and and while filtering the college so how do you filter the colleges right so and where do you apply because us has like what 52 states and there are colleges everywhere right so and which regions to choose you know some people ask to choose based on the climate which is fine and some people you know prefers to choose uh, close to their families which is good and some people don't even care as long as they get to us which is fine um so any uh, anything works but i uh, the way i i recommend is staying close to the tech hubs which means you know staying close to the um uh, in the states or the or the cities which have more number of jobs right obviously um because that is those are the colleges that were that will have the you know highest uh, internship opportunities uh, you know those colleges will you know uh, every company will have around the area uh, will have some sort of tie up with the university it 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 can range from you know providing direct scholarships to the university students or uh, internship opportunities or maybe some major research collaborations so the closer the um uh university uh, to the company you know or the companies around so the chances of getting internship and and the full time opportunities are really high 
so i would recommend you know staying closer to the tech hubs and some for some people you know that might not be too affordable because the expenses will go up and and are are some there are some colleges that are you know far further away from the tech hubs but which are still good and and which also offers some of the research and funding opportunities if that is the case if you know that is the college that you want to go to for what of the reason i i um uh just go for it but but the but uh, i recommend uh to stay near the tech hubs and uh, if not if the if if the college is great at research work or giving some um research opportunity to students or uh, some sort of funding to the students uh then that is a college that you want to uh, go for and 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 uh, you know there are some interesting scenarios right so where uh, you know some people uh want to wrap up you know uh, ra- you know just want to find a way to get ms and and uh, that's it right they don't care, care about which college they are going for even if it is in remote parts of us where uh, where no uh, immigrants lives you know they uh, they don't they they'll be like hey i just want to go for that college and things like that because i've seen that i've seen those people uh, even even my close friends like you know hey man you know i just want to go to us and uh, my finances are not that great so i want to go and pick the college that with with the lowest tuition fee and 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 uh, very low expenses and things like that so that's all that's all the aim for um and if if that is if the funding uh you know is is if the financial are a real issue i i am not against it but that's not that's not a good way to approach as well for example you know if you if you can manage finances some or the other way or if you have a loan just don't limit yourself to applying for a college you know um just because you want to get the get you know you want to be done with the masters for you know uh, as soon as possible and get 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 out of there right so that's not a good way because for example i know two people so whose finances are the same uh, on the same level and their whose uh, gre and dels are the same level but one of op- one opted to go for the uh, university that gave him more funding and the other opted to go for uh, you know the university which is little expensive but it's also very good university so the the guy who went for the funding has to compromise on the you know university and the quality of education because all he had in mind was the you know funding uh, that he uh, received from the university which is which is maybe what i would have done as well but as the time went on um so the un- the guy who went to the university um the better university so he got an internship from amazon so if you if you don't know how much amazon pays for an intern that's insane so that will probably cover more than one semester's fee right and the guy who went who chose the university with funding so he did not get an internship so he was just learning something on his own and you know and he was doing some work at the university and which is fine um right and uh, he started applying for the colleges you know or sort of applying for the uh, full time opportunities and and um, was was struggling for his job struggle for a job right but on the other hand the guy who got an uh, internship at amazon uh, he got a full time offer by the end of the internship so by end of first year he has an offer from amazon which is which in 2016 that was for 120k with 30k bonus so which is like 150k dollars on the other hand the guy from um, the university uh, with with the, uh, the guy who opted for the funding uh, at um, at but you know at the low uh, at, at a more red university i would say so he struggled for a job uh, he was you know but he still secured a job um and and but that was around 80 80k dollars which means that 80000 dollars so if you look at uh, 
the difference, right? So the guy who went to the uh, better university, let's say he paid the fees around what four years at maximum fifteen thousand dollars. So he paid sixty thousand dollar fee, and he got a one one hundred fifty k job. And the guy who went to you know, uh, and that's uh, that's the ultimate job, right? That's a great start for the career. And uh, you know the surroundings. You know your friends are at other good companies, and your network is pretty good. And you can lean on your network whenever you know in the later stages. But on the other hand, for the other guy uh, who opted for the research, um, or, or who opted, you know, who was more on the funding, uh, on the funding aspects, and you know, lowering his expenses, so he, um, he, he that he still got a job, but that wasn't an ideal start, right? Because of the people with similar academics and similar curricul uh, similar academics and similar scores now he's at a very much better position than him and and there are some people who even though if they don't get the funding in the university they just opt for the lowest possible cost even though if they can afford that's not great right that's not good because don't be so short sighted if you can you know get into a good university just get into a good university it will eventually pay off um I've seen so many people doing the same mistakes. Um, so just focus on going to the good college if you can afford, even with the loan. Uh, you know, uh, it will it will be worth it in in the long run. So, um, so yeah, yeah. So th that is in terms of the colleges. And and if you while researching for the colleges, you know there are many portals like US News Ranking which are pretty reliable. Um, and I, uh, I would recommend just talking to the people from the university even before applying, just so that, um, you know, uh, they give the real realistic information on what are the GRA and IELTS and other stuff, right? So that is with the selecting the colleges, uh, you know, how many colleges to apply and, and how to choose the college. On, and the second half of the applying for colleges is how do you apply for the colleges? Should you go for consultancy, which most of the people do? So, you know, um, why do people go to consultancy, right? So it makes their job easier. I agree. Um, I opted for consultancy as well. So, you know, in a way, if you go for a consultancy, most of the times you don't have to do anything. They'll just pick the college for you. All you have to do is, you know, send your documents and they'll take care of the application process. You pay a nominal fee uh, and, and you can just chill on your own, right? But that's that sucks because consultancies don't work in, in your best interest, right? They're in the business of making money. And they're not making money based on the fee that you give to them, which is they're collecting the nominal fee on the first hand, right? All they make money based on their connections with the universities. Um, and um, they have some partnerships with some universities and uh, they try to maximize their revenue. They don't, uh, so which means if you are going with the colleges that they are suggesting, um, then you are screwed up. So, and most of the times they're not knowledgeable enough. There is just so many consultancies that you can, uh, these days. And I don't, yeah, I, they barely have, uh, you know, any knowledge, you know, uh, they just play uh, very safe with your, uh, with your career. Right. So even if you have a chance of getting into a good university, they will, you know, uh, they'll find a way to give you, you know, send you to the, you know, safer university um, because they care most about, you know, getting an admit for you and, and getting, a, getting a visa for you, but not, they don't care whether you are, whether they're doing justice for um, for your academics and curriculum or for, and for your all the hard work that you put into, right? So they don't care or sometimes they don't even realize, you know, they even, they might even think that they're still helping, but they are actually not. So... It is your responsibility to figure out the colleges and uh, and um, understand the application process and and be on top and and being on top of it, right? Even if you go for a consultancy, you know because of timing issues or you know because of whatever the reason it is, be on top of the process. You know you select the colleges, 
and you follow with them um in a timely manner you know sometimes they delay the process and sometimes i mean they have other things going on sometimes they even they might even miss the application packet so there are many factors that can go wrong when opting for a consultancy so i don't recommend doing it because you may not realize the application process is not as hard as it might look on the surface it is very easy and uh, with with a very minimal research and guidance you'll be able to do it it's um it's easier than you uh, know preparing for gr and ielts definitely so it just that it is it might seem little too much at the beginning but it will get easy over the time so if you have uh, you know time just go for it if not you know, if you still want to opt for consultancy that is fine i understand but make sure you follow up make sure you are the one selecting the colleges and make sure um you track the application process through until you get the admit so because there there can be many factors uh that can delay the whole process right and let's say you applied for the colleges right so what next so you know you're done with the colleges you applied for the colleges so you're done with the exams you're done with the application process and now you can chillax a little bit right so you can chill and um uh, uh, not not worry about it anymore right um uh, no you know just just keep track of it you know it, now the work that you have to do on your end might be uh, very low but make sure you keep tab on it right so make sure you know you're tracking the application process make sure that university send the acknowledgments that your application process is completed and um, and at times you know start start following up with the university right and uh, i i i even recommend uh, you know reaching out to um, graduate program coordinator at the, uh, the department in um, in the university who is normally responsible for uh you know making the decisions along with other other faculty on your application process so you know if you if you think that your chances to getting admit are not 100% so you know start you know start reaching out to them you know say why you are interested in the university and what are the things that you are looking for in the university right so that that's uh, you know that still you never know what what uh, is um, the edge that you can get by being proactive you can do that so but that's not mandatory and and uh, typically universities gives admits in like 2 to 3 months time frame so once you get the admit this is where the real game starts right so as soon as you get the first admit even though if that is not the college that you are going to just um start a uh, booking the visa slot because you don't have to um if you have any you know savings id uh, i think that's what they call it you can you can apply, you can start uh, uh you, can, you will be eligible to book the slot and eventually um because booking a slot is very competitive these days and often um because there are very limited availability and uh, there is so much competition right so start this as soon as possible and you can always update um uh the savings id uh with the university that you want to go to even just before a week so you have all the time and and you know slot can be postponed five times so you know just uh, uh just book a little early as early as possible and um, you know if not if things are delayed you can just postpone right so so that is the first thing that you should do once you get one admit and uh, the second thing that you want to do and most people doesn't do is start applying for the on campus opportunities right um one is you know sometimes on some on campus opportunities um <clears throat> excuse me uh sometimes on campus opportunities goes you know uh, the application process goes along with the applica- uh, um sorry sometimes the on campus opportunities uh, application process goes along with the regular application process 
So you have to uh, research about it while applying for for an admit, right? And the second step is, you know, once you get the admit, you can. There will be still many on-campus opportunities. uh particularly uh, with the professors right the research and teaching assistant opportunities so with these opportunities at times uh, most of the uh, at times your uh, university fee will be, fee will be um, fully or partially waived if not in the worst case you will at least get the monthly stipend that most likely covers your expenses and 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 much more right so which means they, that will take away most of the financial burden on you so is, luckily i got some you know research assistant opportunity um and that covered a majority of no that covered uh, my tuition fee as well as i got uh, you know monthly stipend which was real relieving for me because um uh because my finances were pretty tight back then um i mean they are always tight anyway so uh, but still um, you know that 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 will help you in in many ways so start looking for i you know uh, ra and ta opportunities so one way to uh, start the process is reaching out to each professor you know for example if you get admit from the particular from a university and let's say there are like five professors in the university so most of the times uh, not most of the times so every time uh, all the professors will have uh, different research expertise and most of the times they are uh, they are working on some of the research projects where they need students so understand what the professor is doing it will be on the com- campus or the university website and uh, based on how the uh, based on the research of the professor you know uh, prepare your resume and and uh, and uh, send an email saying that hey uh, i am interested in this research area which i see uh, you are working on and i also you know um, research that you were um, published these many papers in this research domain i am very interested and passionate um said i mean say that you can interest you know say that you are interested and passionate about the about the domain and uh, say uh, you know you can say if there is any opportunities you you can just join the research work uh, or if not you know um be be in the uh, loop so that whenever there an opportunity opens you will be the first one to contact right so these are the emails that you want to um, compile for each professor in the university and then uh send out right as soon as you get that mail and if you get four admits you know you might want to send 20 emails and even if one email works understand that you are saving lakhs of rupees in if even if nothing works out you know when you go and talk to the professor in person saying that hey you sent email so that will leave a very good impression uh, on you and whenever an opportunity opens up you will be the first one to be contacted right so research on how to compile an email to the professors for the research uh, f- for uh, the on campus opportunities um in google i mean there are so many resources so just just uh, do your research and uh, start communicating with the professors as soon as you get that mate right or or even before you know if you want to so that that's totally fine um and and if not uh, you know on campus and if not our uh, research and teaching assistant i mean there will be still some on campus opportunities at the library or uh, at the at the mess or or at gym right so those are the opportunities that you you know want to apply for because at least as long as it covers monthly uh, expenses that is still a big win right while while we are in the finances i want to talk about the finances that why that we need to show during the visa interview right so when while i was applying um for for the universities and for the visa the process was not so strict right in the sense as long as you have a loan letter and and the estimation that you have enough finances you got the visa but now they started 
you know, scrutinizing very well, right? Because, I mean, uh, obviously, when the laws are not strict, you know, there are just so many opportunities for, you know, taking advantage uh, and doing doing all sorts of fraud um, work, which I don't, you know. So, I mean, because, yeah, this is, this is a tricky one to comment on, right? So, I understand, uh, you know, people taking advantage, but that's also not good because if you're not complying with the law, you will eventually uh, struggle with it one or the other way, right? So, which means since it is one of the key factors in getting the visa, so I would recommend to think about, you know, the finances as early as possible because... Uh, you know, if you are uh, well off and rich or, you know, if you don't need to worry about it, good for you. But, um, you know, for but for the most of the people who, who needs, uh, um, who needs to, you know, um, who needs a loan or, or uh, who don't even, if, even if some, there are some people they, who, who can't even get a loan for whatever the uh, reasons there are. So these are the people that need, they need to be a little more uh, street smart and um, they have to be like a lot more proactive, right? Because, um, I mean, everything that you have done uh, depends on the finances at the end of the day, right? If you can prove that you will be able to study in US on your own uh, and if you can't prove you have enough finances, you're not going to get the visa, Right? So one thing uh, I recommend is starting as early as possible. In fact, you should just consider this in, before you start of the uh, you know application process. Um, but don't get disheartened, right? Um, based on my experience, uh, things will align for you. You know, if you really want to go, um, and even if you haven't figured out most things, things will align. Um, but you just have to be a little more, uh, as I was saying, street marks and be a little more proactive. Um, so, and then the, some, the loan process is very tricky and, and, um, particularly with the government banks, it, it takes forever and the chances are very slim as well. Right. So I, I, you know, if you want to get, but they offer good interest rates and it's a little cheaper, uh, which I understand. But if you want to, you know, if, if that is not the case for you, if you can't get a loan from a government bank, I would recommend going for Credila, so which is uh, the HDFC, uh, HDFC managed uh, loan uh, company. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's subsidiary of HDFC, right? So they're pretty good um, about giving loans to students. You know, they consider uh, US course, your academics, and... Uh, even though if you are, you know, if you can't, uh, even, you know, uh, you can get some relatives to sign off for you or, or, you know, there are just so many opportunities, so many ways that you can uh, find a way to get a loan from Kedila. And, I, and lately I've, my, I, I learned about Prodigy, which my cousins applied for. So they, they are the private, uh, entity as well and uh, how they are you know pretty liberal with giving loans to students so you know i'm sure like there are a few more of these so do your research and uh, start contacting those agents and understand what is the process and uh, do it as early as possible if you are uh, struggling to if, if you are planning to figure this out after you get an admit so <laughs> you won't be able to uh, do much within like two to three months right because if you have, if you haven't, you know, if your finances are not great and uh, if you need support from other people, you know, you, they'll at least need like good amount of time, um, lead time to even to help you. And, uh, most of the times you have to, um, even if you have a loan and you also have to show, you know, like decent amount of money in the bank right uh, which is around like 25 to 30 lakhs on the safer side and and uh, procuring that money is is not easy for, for most of the folks 
so and and you cannot just deposit the money the day before at the a visa interview right so i mean at least they need to see that you know there are good enough transactions from the account and uh, and you have this money for a while so i'd recommend at least like the minimum of 3 3 to 4 months and uh, make sure the account that you are showing uh, has good enough transactions and money just doesn't come out of somewhere if if it's a possibility so you know you have to give the visa officer as many you know reasons to as many uh, good reasons to give you the visa as as many reasons as possible right because you know the, in the, in the visa interview process you know their goal is to you know if you if to give you the visa because they need students and they want to stand some students you know like they have certain goals and most of the times you know they are willing to give the visa so as long as you don't mess up uh, in the finances or uh, as long as you don't look suspicious you will just get the visa right so just just uh, think about all the way, uh, all the possibilities of you know where you can get the loan and how you can arrange the money often you know seeking help from families or relatives and like family relatives or you know cousins or, or even some you know getting money for the interest right you know whatever you know you need to make it work just just make it work and and do it as early as possible so that the chances for visa are really high and uh let's address the last and the most important part of the visa interview sorry of the f1 application process which is visa interview right uh let's say you got the admit which is good and you sorted out the finances which is perfect and now it all comes to the visa interview right so the funny thing is uh everything you know most of the, the visa interview only happens for like uh for a minute or two at maximum so and and all the work that you have put in one in the past 1 to 2 years depends on uh on uh on those two how we behave or how we um uh, answer in those two minutes which is which is pretty crazy you know um, but it is what it is and um, we have to adhere to it right so as i was saying earlier so we even though these are the most uh, you know important 2 minutes um of the career in 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 a way so you have to understand that visa officers are there to support you and uh, their best interest to say is to give you an, uh, to give you the visa you know if they can right and and they they are mostly they are not like you know the professors or uh, or you know some teachers where we you know or or the interviewers where we are so afraid to talk right uh, so that's not and since they're from us you know they don't so it's they are they're super friendly right and and they um, and they don't stress you out or uh, they don't you know uh freak you they don't freak you out you know they're just super friendly and uh, they are they are just to help you right so as long as you have everything sorted out you you're good for the most part even though if you don't right so the factors that goes into the visa interview are like you know being confident right so and and what are you going to say in those 2 minutes is everything so i recommend uh, having all the documents ready before 2 weeks at least if not that's fine but this is just a recommendation uh, and uh, start preparing just before 2 weeks 2 weeks is good enough time to uh, prepare for the visa but you know your preparation should be aligned with whatever you have in mind because when i inter- when i went for the you know i prepared like i prepared for the visa plus like anything i took so many mock interviews and i was like you know so ready for the interview and all but 
whenever i went to the visa officer i don't know what happened i just spoke out my mind so which means i haven't uh spoken what i prepared right so and luckily you know um, i spoke out my mind but which is also good but i would prefer to speak whatever i prepared right because sometimes um you know your mind you know the instant responses you know um may not be <laughs> may not be what uh, the visa officer want to hear and since we are not the native speakers you know whatever we want to convey may not be conveyed rightly you know if you are just speaking out your mind so often preparing well for the interview process and uh, preparing with what you really want to speak you know you know uh, there is the sweet spot uh, you know conveying what you really want to convey but at the same time you know massaging that with whatever the visa officer wants to hear you know that's that's a really sweet spot that you want to focus on while you know preparing for the visa into your process so yeah uh, just do as many mock interviews as possible uh, i mean you don't have to do like 10 20 um, even just three four interviews that's good and uh, one of the you know regular suggestions uh, that people give is practice before the mirror and i would i i cannot emphasize you know the importance of it uh, because when i uh, was practicing before the mirror you know i still blanked out and i blanked out during the mock interviews as well because you just you were just not used to it so 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 just uh, pre- just be prepared for it to blank out um but you know if you prepare it well you know if you know what you are getting into um you know if you know what are the things that can go wrong so just just plan for all those scenarios and and just be prepared and and if you if you came all the way until the visa process until the visa interview step i mean you are there because you tackle you know i also tofel you know tackle the speaking exams and you tackle gre so which means that you are smart you are eligible to get the visa it's just that you need to you know um just be a little um strategic about the visa interview process and and uh, you want to understand uh, most of the times the visa officers want to give you the visa so that is in their best interest um so don't give them a reason not to give you the visa and uh, don't get freaked out about the visa interview itself if you made it uh, until here you are really good so so just uh, just keep that in mind and um, and yeah and i think that's it uh, that's all what i want to say and i i might um, you know once you get the visa that's a whole different story i probably will do one more episode about it uh, i haven't thought about it until now so but yeah um i you know as i was saying in the first episode and i coached around like 100 people in in uh, at the various stages of the visa process if you have any questions um reach out to me um at the boa uh, with rohit at gmail.com and uh, that's my uh, you know instagram id as well boa with rohit just feel free to send me um any questions i want to help as many uh, people as possible um uh, in in this process so that's it from me thanks uh, for listening i hope it was helpful um and please do uh leave me feedback or if you want me to talk on any particular topic just uh, you know send in the comments or send an email so thanks that's it thanks everyone